Hey gang, today I thought I'd do a short lesson to show you a couple of Robin Ford voicings over a kind of smooth blues. It's a neat little progression to play and to groove along with. You can solo over as well. It's got some nice little chord voicings that maybe you don't know. So what the heck, let's give it a whirl. All right, see you in just a second. Before I show you the voicings, and I promise I will, I want to share with you a little bit about how I think about creating something like this. Now, I won't speak for Robin Ford. I have no idea how he does this, but this is how I do it. When I'm creating a voicing, when I'm using somebody else's voicing or my own and thinking about it for a, for a rhythm part, I tend to think about a melody, a simple melody that can be repeated. And that's part of the power of the blues is it has these things that are the same. There's a lot of patterns to the blues, right? They're the same, but they're only slightly different. And people recognize, oh, I'm, I heard that before, but it was a little bit different. And that's the power, that's part of the power of the blues. All right, without getting all zen, let me show you what I mean. This is a blues in the E. So the melody line I'm working with right now, and it's kind of a slow, but rhythmic, jazzy sort of blues. So not too many notes here. You don't want to do too much. But here's what I'm thinking about, creating a line that's like this. Over the E, I'm doing. That's what I'm doing over the E. Basically, minor third, which is a G, to the root, which is an E. All right, let's take a look at what happens over A. Here's the A7 chord. I just do the same thing. Which is nice. So the audience hears the same thing but a slightly different harmony. Kind of cool. Over the five chord to the four chord, which is a B to A, usually you have to change that a little bit. I just went with this. Pretty straightforward, right? And then we're back to. All right, gang, let's go over these specific voicings. Now, these are mostly on strings four, three, and two, which makes some really ideal voicings. It's kind of like the jackpot for the guitar. You avoid stepping on the bassist, you avoid stepping on the singer or keyboard. It's still full enough to play on its own, so it sounds good, and it's easy to finger. So if you like these voicings, if you like the sound of them, very useful. Of course, if you don't, don't use them, no problem. But if you like the sound of them, they're going to be really good voicings. Okay, let's go over the E voicings. They are like this. Okay, let's take that first chord, and I love this one. What I love about it is it's totally ambiguous. It's got that ambiguous jazz flavor. <laughs> that you can kind of slide into, either up or play down to. Really nice. Okay, where does it come from? What kind of chord it is? Let's go over the voicing itself first and then I'll tell you how to think about it or how you can choose to think about it. D string seven, G seven, B eight. That's the, vo that's the voicing. Okay, so what is it? What's the name of this chord? I don't even know. You can think of it a couple of different ways. Here's the first way you can think about it. We probably know the minor seven voicing with the root on the fifth string, like this. That's an E minor seven, right? And if you take the fifth of that chord, and you take that fifth off, and you make it a fourth, you get this chord. So what is that called? Is that called an E minor fourth? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what I'd call that. 
But that's yeah. what you're doing. You're taking the fifth and you're making it a fourth. In that chord. Okay. Is that the only way to look at it? Here's another way of looking at it. You probably also know the so-called Hendrix chord, the seven sharp nine chord in E. You can think about that chord and taking the third of that chord, which is right here, and making it a suspended fourth by moving it up one. So when you do that, you also get this chord. So you can think of it either as a dominant that you're suspending the fourth or a minor where you're moving the fifth to the fourth. All right, that's all we need to worry about for that. Okay, so that's what that is. Now I play the middle three strings, I omit the root. I just like how that sounds a little less cluttered. I like how that sounds. If you like the root in there, if your musical ears tell you to keep it in, go ahead, keep it in, put that root down there. Okay, next one is this. This is actually really simple. It's just the middle part of this voicing. Let's go for what that voicing is. It's D string six, G seven, B five. The root is the E on a 5th string 7th fret on A7. So if you're playing the roots here, and if you're not, sounds like this. Okay? To get that other one, I'm just playing this. So all I'm doing is I'm suspending on this 7th chord, this is a regular E7, I'm suspending the 4th. So this voicing is 7, D7, G7, B5. Nicely resolves to that. So that's what I'm doing on the E. Okay, here's what I'm doing on the A. Forgetting about the trick that I used at the end there, and I'll show you what that trick is, really simple one. You can definitely use that idea. This is really just an A7 voicing on the middle three strings. When I show you the full chord, you probably already know it. Anyway, here's the voicing. It's D7, G6, B8. And this is just part of this big, big bar chord, which you probably already know. But if you don't, just keep in mind that this is the root, this is the third, and that's the flatted seventh. Where's the fifth? I'm taking the fifth out of this one. Okay, so that's that. And then we go down to this. This is just, again, this chord, this bar chord, but just the middle strings. So we've got D5, G6, and there's the fifth, B5. Okay, so. Now I do a little trick here. Whenever you take a seventh chord and move it up a minor third, you, it often sounds good, so give it a shot sometimes. That means move it up three frets, as simple as that, so. And then I did it again. I'm just moving it up three frets, you see. Now there's a reason for that, theory-wise, but let's not get into that. Just think of the rule that when I'm playing a dominant seventh chord, I can maybe try, I can try to move it up a minor third and it's gonna sound good in a lot of contexts, okay? So that's what I'm doing there. Okay, next stop on the train is this. Those are really nice voicings. They're the same voicing for the B, and the A, they're ninth voicings. So let's do the B9. The B9th voicing 
is D7, G6, B7, and this time I am going to put on the top E string, the little E string, on the 7th. There's my ninth right there, C sharp, okay? That's a nice, sophisticated sound. So that's the A, obviously. If this is the B, then we'll just move it down two strings to get the A voice in. And there we go. All right, and we end the song with this. Which you already learned, and then now this time I did hit I did hit the bass note. But basically it's a sharp five chord. B7 sharp five. And if you wanted to, you could just play the middle three strings and it would sound great. but I did add the bass note. Here's the way I think about this. So this is a B7 sharp five. Here's my B on the sixth string seven, not playing the five or the A string. On the D string, I'm playing the seven, on the G string eight, and on the B string eight again. I'm taking that fifth in the seventh chord, and I'm making it a sharp five. Okay, and then finally, our regular E9 voicing. That is A7, D6, G7, B7. You know, the really simple way of thinking about this one is just going with that same shape a half step, approaching it from a half step up. And that sounds great. You know that when you take a dominant seven and you approach it from one step up or, or down, it sounds great. So I just played that bass note. All right. Well, there you go. All right, gang. Well, there you go. A Robin Ford style sophisticated blues in E with some really nice voicings that maybe you didn't know, or maybe you did, but you just forgot about that you can incorporate into your blues. Hope you enjoyed this one. Please leave a like if you liked it, and we'll see you on down the road.